So React just released an experimental version that has a bunch of new features inside of it. Now, it's not ready for production usage, but anyone can go ahead and install it and give it a try and check out these things uh, before they're actually officially released in a production version. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at the suspense or how we can start using suspense for loading states whenever we want to make API calls and do really any kind of async tasks. So let's go ahead and just dive into this and check out how we can do this. So I have a create react app project open and I just ran this command to get it started um, or MPX in front um, if you don't have create react app already installed. And this is just the name of my project. Then after that, I'm gonna install the experimental versions of React. So React at experimental and React DOM at experimental. And this will give me access to these new features. Now, the first thing that we're gonna to need to do when that's up here is in our index.js file, this is usually how you would start a React project. React DOM.render, here's our you know our root React component. And then here's the DOM node that we are grabbing. Now with this, we need to activate concurrent mode. And to do that, we say react dom create root. And that's just on this guy here. And at the end we say dot render. Oops, I don't want this guy. I want my app. And I render my app component here. So just a slightly different syntax to enable this new type of mode that we can start doing these things in. So now my app over here is just a simple React component which has a single div that says yo. Now I have my server running. And let's just come over here. You can see my yo over there, so we are good to go. Now the first thing that I want to do is in my application here is I want to start fetching some data from an API and display it in my application. So the API that we're going to use is the random user.me API. So you can go to this URL to get a response and we're going to copy this. This is the URL we're going to use and this will just give you a random person and this is free. You don't need an API key or anything so it's super sweet. So I'm going to create a new file here called personapi.js. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a function called fetch person. And the purpose of this function is we are going to fetch a person. So I'm going to say fetch, and then this is the URL for my API. And we're going to say dot then x.json. So uh, we're going to wait the promise or dot then the promise. And then after that, we're going to read the JSON response. That returns another promise. So we're going to dot then that. And then here, we're going to get the results, which look like this. And so this will be give me an object. Now, what I'd like to pass is just the person itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the results and get the first item in the array. So I'm dot then x dot results and get the first element there. So that'll give us the first person. Now there's one thing that we need to do to get this working with suspense. We have to map this promise to work with how the suspense API works. So we're going to create a function called wrap promise. And it's going to take a promise as a parameter. And then it's going to basically make it work with the API that react expects. So we're going to say let status is going to be um, pending by default. So we basically need to keep track of whether our promise is complete whether it's loading or whether there's an error with it. And so we're going to store that in this string variable here. We also need a variable, which I'm going to call result. And this is going to store um, any kind of extra data. For example, the data we get from the promise or the error we get from the promise. And then we're going to create a variable here called suspender. And this is where we're just going to wait for the promise. And in this first one here, we're going to say dot then. If we got a dot then in this first parameter, that means it worked. So we can say status is equal to success. And we can say the result is equal to R. Otherwise, we got an error. So we can say status is equal to error. 
and result is equal to e. Then at the bottom here, we are just going to return a function, which is basically going to um, where we can read and check the status of how all this is going. So we're going to say if the status is equal to pending, suspense expects us or react expects us to throw the promise so it can catch it. So we're going to throw the promise. Otherwise, if there's an error, we are going to throw the result. And then else um, we know if it's not pending, it's not an error, that it was worked, it was successful. So here we're going to say return result and just return the data. So uh, this wrap promise we are going to call over our fetch person. So here I'm just going to say export const and this here I'm going to say create resource and we're going to return object and we're going to have a person resource here which we're just going to say wrap promise and fetch person. So our fetch person is going to return a promise and this promise we are wrapping and making sure it fits the suspense API. So now we can, once we have this set up, this is basically a function that we can now reuse um, with whatever fetch or whatever APIs we want to fetch from now. And we can reuse that once we have this set up. And now what we can do is here, I can say const resource is equal to create resource. And note when we do this, this is going to actually fire off the API call, right? So when we call create response, it's actually going to fire off an API call. So the resource here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we need to import this from React. I'm going to create a suspense component. And here is where I can set a fallback, which is a component that gets rendered if it's loading. So here I'm going to just display an H1 call loading. And then inside of this is where I wanted to display my component um, when the data is done loading, for example. So here's my person component, which we haven't created yet, but we're going to add. And we're just going to pass the resource in here. OK, so let's create our person, person.js. And I'm going to use a little snippet. Now the cool thing here is our person component is super simple. All we say is person is equal to resource, resource I mean, dot person dot read. And so if this thing is still loading, it's going to throw the promise, which is going to be caught by the suspense component, and it's going to display a loading indicator. Otherwise, um, we get our data, and so we can display it here. And so you can see it's much cleaner. It almost looks synchronous. Um, and we can just say person dot, and let's see what we have available to us. We can display our gender. Let's start with the name. So let's say name dot first. And we can display the uh, name of the person. All right, so let's go check it out. And my person is not defined need to actually import this. So I'm going to the front of my person with my cursor. I'm going to hit control space and I'm going to go ahead and auto import this. All right, so I can see a name here and you can see very quickly that it flashed loading and then it flashed this. Uh, pro tip, if you hit inspect, go to the network tab in Chrome, what we can do here is we can actually click on online and make things slower, like a slow 3G connection. And this will just slow down the API so we can see the states. So here you can see the loading, and then it's going to switch to the per name of the person. Now, uh, this is just a cool tip that you can use with any API to arbitrarily slow it down and see your UI. All right, we're going to go back to online now. Um, and there you go. So that is the basics of suspense and how we can use it. So pretty sweet. Um, it cleans up the UI quite a bit. Now the cool thing about this is you don't have to have the suspense directly, you know, wrapping your component. The suspense can be high up in your tree.
So for example, it still works if we say put suspense at the very top. Um, right, so we can refresh and we can see it, how it works there. Um, but note, uh, suspense, you're going to usually want to wrap it close because notice how this is going to work. So here I just say another random string, right? So if I go to my, let's actually just keep this on slow so we can see it best. So you can see that what's going to happen is my random string here is showing up while it's showing the loading component and then this shows up. And that's because my div is outside of the suspense component. Now if I want to only show my random string here whenever it's done loading, I can stick it in there with my person. right? And we can wait for this to reload on the slow 3G connection and we can watch as it's blank, goes to loading and then it displays both of them at once. So that's pretty cool. So it's very easy now to kind of move things around and get things to load in the sequence that you want. Um, so let's look at one more example with uh, two suspense or two things that we're loading. So let's go back to our resource over here. Um, and by the way, I just did command click or control click on this to uh, jump to the function call. And I'm just gonna create another random one here. So. Uh, this is going to be a async function that we're just going to do set timeout to show you that this works with any kind of async thing that you want to do. So here I'm going to say random number. And we're just going to slow it down for the sake of example. So here we're going to return a new promise. And we're going to say set timeout. And here we're going to resolve math dot random and then we just need to set yep here how long we want so uh, let's go three seconds so we're basically going to wait three seconds and then give them a random number that's what this code does here so now in my create resource I'm going to say num is equal to random number and again this is returning a promise I don't need to make this async here so we need to wrap this with our wrap promise. And now I'm going to create a new component, which I'm going to call num. And we're just going to display our random number in here. So I can say n is equal to resource dot, what do I call it? Do I call it num? Yeah, num. Let's just call it n. Uh, now let's call it num. Let's make it a little bit more descriptive. And we'll call it read. So here's our random number. Your random number is, and we'll display it here. All right, so now let's display our num component and pass in our resource. So now we're working with two separate async guys, right? We have our number and our person and they can take different amount of times to load. And what's gonna happen now is it's actually gonna wait for both of them to finish loading before it displays anything. So, right, we're gonna go like our API make it very fast now, right? Cause we're online. Now when I refresh the page, you notice it's going to show loading for three seconds and it's going to show both of them. Now you may want to split these things up. Like maybe you don't want them to load in at the same time. Maybe you do. It, it just depends on how you want it to work. So if we want to say load them in on different times, we can do something like this. So we can wrap our num in a suspense and our person in a suspense. So here I can say loading num and here I can say loading person. And now I have them on two different timers. So we can see that our person loaded really fast, whereas this one was a little bit slower, right? So we can see it's loading the number and we can see our person's there. So now you can kind of decide, uh, do you want both of them to load in at the same time or do you want to split them up, right? And again, we can do whatever we want with this random div here. Um, and so there you go. So that is um, what I wanted to start with, with suspense. There is a ton more to this and we can add on more complexity and more things with this uh, but really a ton of people are still trying to figure out the best way to use suspense 
and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to use suspense too. So we'll see where this goes and I'll be probably making some more videos on how we can take this a step further and some of the other things that we can start doing now that there is concurrent mode and suspense. So this is a small taste of what you can do uh, with suspense.